Do they want to be premiers or the prime minister? I'm Brian Lilly with the rebel.media. We're in the middle of a federal election campaign right now, but you'd hardly know it based on the promises being made by some of the party leaders anyway. The NDP, well, Tom Mulcair is going across the country repeating one promise over and over and over again, $15 a day daycare. Mr. Harper has a plan that he calls income splitting. That only benefits 15% of Canadians, some of the richest families in the country. We're going to get rid of that. And that's the type of thing that we will use to put that money towards $15 a day quality childcare. So Canadians know that the NDP has the best track record for balanced budgets of any party in Canada. Now, one problem with that, daycare, just like all social programs, is a provincial responsibility. Mulcair can't deliver anything on this unless the provinces agree and Importantly, unless they pony up. He's not being outdone by Justin Trudeau, though. Trudeau, is, his big infrastructure program is actually, two-thirds of it roughly, about social programs or social engineering. And that includes his announcement in Toronto the other day where he promised more money for social housing. Again, an area of provincial responsibility. Trudeau and Mulcair, of course, aren't alone this week. The Green Party released their platform. I tend not to pay much attention to them, but Elizabeth May is going even further than these two. She's promising free university and college tuition for every Canadian that wants to go. Not only is that incredibly expensive, it's also provincial jurisdiction, so it's not something that she can deliver on. This is not the way that a country should run. We have a constitution that delineates responsibility, area of jurisdiction for a reason. Some some areas are better suited to the federal government. Can you imagine the provinces deciding that they're going to set up their own postal service or their own military? That would be the wrong way to go. National defense is handled by the federal government. On issues of social programs, our founding fathers, the Fathers Confederation, decided that it was better to let those issues, which have a very particular local focus, be handled by lower levels of government, closer to the people. What sense does it make to have bureaucrats in Ottawa making decisions about daycare in Vancouver and St. John's? Or, for that matter, issues of social housing. These are issues where people closer to the ground know the local conditions. And that is why the Fathers of Confederation divvied up the Constitution that way. But instead, we've got federal leaders running to be premiers, essentially, because that is the area of their focus. They're, they're actually not concerned about national security. They're not concerned about the military. They're concerned about running social programs out of Ottawa. The Bloc Québécois used to make hay about this all the time when they were still in the nation's capital. Gilles Doucette, the leader, used to make a point over and over again, and I think he was right on it, and it was, why are there 10,000 bureaucrats working at Health Canada when they don't run a single hospital? For the most part, they're interfering in areas of provincial jurisdiction. That's what they do. And then that helps give life to groups like the Bloc Québécois and the Parti Québécois that say, rightly, hold on a minute, why is the federal government interfering? We need to get back to learning about this in civics classes in school, knowing that there are areas where the province is in charge of some things, the federal government in charge of others, and then holding our politicians to account and demanding that they adhere to the Constitution. Why are we having federal leaders run across the country promising things they can't deliver on unless the provinces want to bankrupt themselves just as Trudeau, Mulcair and May are promising to bankrupt the federal government?